my name's Christina, and this is Tipu, and he is a southern tamandua, also known as um, a lesser anteater or a vested anteater, a crested anteater. Um, and he would come from areas of Central and South America. So what he's eating right now is avocado and worms. <laughs> his perfect uh, pairing of the two, and that's because he is an insectivore. So most of his diet consists of ants and termites, uh, small beetle larvae, honeybees, and honey. Uh, but the avocado is with him because he is a little bit older, and so to help lubricate his joints and keep him moving like he's supposed to through the trees, uh, we offer that as a kind of an extra supplement for him. So. Um, the reason we're here is we're talking about structure and design and tipu. Um, although there are no biomimetic uh, inventions that have been inspired yet by the tamandua, uh, they are a great example of interesting structure. For instance, if you're interested in packaging, um, this guy, what you can't see right now is he has a 16 inch long tongue. Where does it go, right? <laughs> Where do you package that? Um, so it actually, we think that there's kind of a sheath that it may um, connect to down in his chest area and kind of relaxes and sits in that area while he's not using it. And then once he yawns or once he's activating his tongue, then it comes out all the way. Um, the only time I've ever seen his tongue is when he yawns because uh, we obviously provide his food in an e easier area. But in the wild, he would be going for ant hills and termite mounds. Um, and on top of that, his tongue is long, but if you look at the microstructure of it, uh, he also has these little um, barbs that come off the tongue, and that kind of helps grab those insects and pulls them in um, to his body. Now, if you think he has teeth, he does not. Um, he doesn't mash his food up orally. He actually swallows it down whole, and he has stones in his belly that grind up that food for him. It's a very, very primitive digestive system, but a really cool one and effective for tipu. <laughs> And he's currently trying to find termites, I think, within our, our climbing structure here. Um, another thing, though, that's really great that you're getting a good view of is this leverage of his tail. So he has what's called a prehensile tail. It works just like your hands. It grabs. Um, and as you see, he is pretty bare at the bottom of it. And that's because he needs it in order to hold on to stuff. Um, so this guy, he kind of has this mechanical apparatus on the back of his body um, to aid him in climbing through trees, but kind of a neat inspiration of something that could be flexible, soft, but also precise in being able to hold on to things. Um, he also has the ability to rotate his ankles backwards, and so when he goes up a tree, he can come right back down face first. Um, he's covered in this coarse hair, which is pretty awesome. It's this kind of uh, wavy strand, and it protects him from the ants and termites, which instantly start to sting him once he's infiltrated the mound. The one other thing that I love about Tifu, um, which is so important today, <laughs> is communication. And Tipu is not a species that communicates vocally like we do. In fact, that's very, very uh, rare to, to witness. You generally would see it between a mom and a baby, and the sniffling that you may have heard, that was him. Um, that's pretty much it. But scent is huge. That nose is an incredibly powerful tool, and so when he's trying to find other females in the wild, he will leave a scent mark for them. Kind of like a Hallmark card that says, hey, this is Tipu, yours truly. Uh, except to us as humans, it's incredibly potent and stinky. Imagine a skunk and multiply that by about three or five times, and that's what Tipu smells like on a regular basis. Um, so he uses it as defense from predators, but it's a really interesting idea of how to leave a mark, your own personal stamp, behind um, with, a, with a potent stink that is yours and only yours. So each tamandua has their own unique odor. Um, and we think there might be a, a link to that of finding mates, that maybe certain mates uh, desire certain odors. Um, but that's something the San Diego Zoo is looking into and uh, that we're always trying to find out more with our wildlife is um, the things that we don't know for sure yet. So my man Tifu, really, really cool. Cool little critter. <laughs> Tipu is what we call an animal ambassador, which means that he is um, kind of a special animal in the face that he is not afraid to be around the public. He's not stressed out by cameras or flashes or people or loud noises. Uh, and he's a very famous ambassador. He's met 
thousands of children in his lifetime. He's gone to schools, to hospitals, to special events. And so this is something that he's totally born to do. He's been on the news. Um, and the reason we have these ambassadors, and this is the most important thing for the zoo, is that we want to inspire people to care about our wildlife the exact same way that we care about it. And so to have an ambassador like this who you can actually see in person, I mean, you look at a photograph of a tamandua and that's something, but you, you meet the guy in person and you smell him in person, that's incredible. It's powerful. And that is exactly what we want people to connect to our wildlife, to care about our wildlife, just like the zoo does. Um, because we all need to be wildlife heroes, and he's definitely one, to say the least. But, um, you know, we want everybody to know that they can be heroes too. And so that's why we bring these ambassadors um, to different venues, so people can really, really connect and, uh, and see them as they truly are, which is pretty amazing. You guys can see him picking away. He's doing exactly what Tamando is do, um, which is leave a mark. This is him saying, this is my tree, even though we do use it for other animals that climb too. Um, but he's leaving that scent mark that says, this is mine, and no other Tamandua can have it. And I'm going to pick away at some of this so I leave some scratch marks um, as well. And then he'd move on to another tree. And that's what you'd kind of see these guys do actually in the wild. Um, it's not what you kind of see them do. You would see them do in the wild. And it's just like I said, that stamp of uh, this is mine, and if you're looking for me, this is where I'll be. <laughs> and more scratching. Tipu's also 14, uh, going on 15 years old. So he's, he's up there in age. Um, we love to give him these experiences, too, to climb around and to walk around uh, to make sure that he gets his exercise. And he's properly cared for, of course, um, giving him these nutritional supplements as well. And uh, introducing to new places. I mean, this place smells totally different, you know, so. We have clipped his claws just because um, he he was starting to kind of, they were kind of overgrowing a little bit because he obviously doesn't have to use them on termite mounds which would naturally file them down. Um, however, they would be sharp to a very, very sharp point, kind of like a, if you've ever seen Jurassic Park, the raptor claw, it would be a lot like that. And the color is, is standard, they all are dark brown, but the, the purpose is it has incredible strength. He can close it with um, kind of like a ratchet and he can hold on to things really tightly and then he also can pick away stone. I've actually seen him rip up chunks of concrete before um, with that strength in that claw. And that's perfect because termite mounds tend to be very you know, concrete-like. Um, so that's the purpose of the claws. And if you watch him walk, he doesn't ever walk with his claws down. He always walks with them sideways, partially so he doesn't pierce his own pad, but more so to keep them nice and sharp so that he can utilize them throughout his entire lifetime.